Are you rolling? Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, rolling. Don't, don't film this. 400 <laughs> quid, mate. I must be the only man in the world that would pay 400 quid for this shit. Uh, right, okay. Uh, what are we doing today? Well, God, we've just talked about it for like two hours. We still don't really have a f***ing plan, do we? <laughs> uh, I suppose we're all slowly emerging from lockdown. I'm just having a bit of a tidy. Okay, hi, welcome along. Uh, welcome back, maybe, because it seems to be the same 300 people that watch our films every uh, every time we put one out, uh, which we really appreciate. Thank you, and thanks for your comments. We try and answer every one of them. Um, that was f***ing awful, wasn't it? What are we doing? Well, I don't know why today. It's difficult to get into it. <laughs> I kind of keep feeling like I want to somehow block the world out. I don't know why. I'll tell you what, why don't you follow me for a minute? Let's get some vents open in here. So during lockdown, um, we've we've done a couple of we've done a couple of kind of what would you call them? Picking films where we've gone out, we've gone to a farm, we've gone to a car boot sale. We haven't filmed going to a car boot sale, but it's very it's kind of practically the same thing, isn't it? If you know what I mean, you go in there. I always look for tools. I don't look for anything else. Uh, tools and vintage kind of things that I think we can kind of use in a project. You know, if you want stuff like this, that this is how I store it, by the way. Um, if you want stuff like that, I'm just opening that window. You could do a lot worse than befriending a farmer and they're people with space. So when you've got space, I mean, we've covered this in the last video, you don't say no to things. Someone says, I've got this bunch of old shit, would you like it? And you say yes, because you've got space to store it. And then slowly your workshop kind of encroaches on you. And then suddenly it's not a workshop anymore. It's a storage area that you work in, which is hopefully what isn't going to happen here. But I do have a serious tool problem, as all of you guys know. So what happened about three weeks ago, the, the gentleman whose farm we were allowed to pick on came and knocked on my door at about kind of six o'clock in the evening. I'd already had a couple of shandies, actually. And my, my missus answered the door and she was like, there's someone here to see you. And cut a long story short, um, he had a a really, really good swage block that was in the boot of his uh, pickup. And he showed us it and, um, you know, he asked, he didn't know what it was actually. And he asked me, you know, what is it? What's it called? Blah, blah, blah. And I told him, cut a long story, you cut a, a longer story even shorter than that. It's a 14 inch swage block. Let's double check that right now. Yeah, 14 inch, just over, a fraction over 14 inch. Um, and he's, he's, he's then like, oh, well, I've, um, I've just been doing a clearance for someone. And uh, the guy was a silversmith. And he goes, um, so there's this, and then there's this array of tools to go with it. And he said, you know, was I interested? And of course, this is all of us just coming out of kind of, you know, lockdown and, you know, re-emerging into the world, if, if you want to kind of call it that. And of course, I haven't had a decent income for months now. So the thought of buying another swage block, considering I've already got one, was probably, you know, not high on my agenda at that time. But these things just, you know, they very rare. Well, put it this way, you have to go looking for them. They very rarely come knocking on your door at six o'clock at night after you've had a couple of beers. So what did we do? You, you already know the rest of this story. Of course, I bought it. I could ill afford to do it, but that's what we've done. So 
This is our little hall of silversmithing, stroke blacksmithing, stroke tinsmithing tools. So um, join us and let's let's have a good look at these and have a talk. I'm no expert on all this lot, so any of our any of our subscribers, anyone who's watching this film, feel free to drop a comment in their correctors because I'm going to get this wrong. So it'd be nice for you to kind of put your input in here as well and kind of take it, maybe turn the tables and educate us a little bit. Should we just should we just get stuck into it? I think that's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> you talking to me or yourself? Kind of you, but myself as well. <laughs> Go for it. I'm trying to be TV, Mark. You're all TV presenter. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be TV. You know what I mean? It's not bloody easy. Um, yeah. So what have we got? What have we got? We've got a 14 inch swage block. Um, so why did I go for this one? Well, let's just quickly show you the one I've, you know, you've probably seen before. So this is like, a, I can't even lift this bugger. And I kind of jumped at it, really. I kind of made the guy an offer that was kind of somewhere just below asking price. The guy said yes. I drove out after work that day, gave him the money, stuck it in the boot of the car. And to be quite frank with you, I did have a reason for buying it because I wanted to start making these. And I felt that having a form to form that shape would be useful. I never actually made any of these. I started getting into trace hooks and then I made a jig to make the trace hooks. So in theory, I didn't need to buy the kind of 250 quid swage block. But to me, there's almost a, a sculptural element to those swage blocks. I don't know, you guys might agree. It's just such a chunk. People look at it and go, what, is that like a Henry Moore sculpture? Boo, 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 boo. Mark's just gonna be dropping in woman with child, Henry Moore this, Henry Moore that, Barbara Hepworth. I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do is the honest truth. But the fact of the matter is, to me, there's a sculptural element to these. You don't often see them. You do see them with cracks, breaks, chips, another great big bloody chunk of rubbish, somebody might say, but I don't know. But the problem with this one is all of the, all everything on it is massive. It's huge. It's like when blacksmiths would sit with a sit with a hammer like this, you know, and pound away all day making stuff when people had muscles and people had kind of a, a work ethic, if you like. So why did I go for that one? Well, because this one is a smaller scale, half inch, three quarters inch, inch and a quarter. Same here on these. These are far more usable sizes. Also, I suppose these, um, uh, what would you call them? These kind of like half round or bottom tools. They're all a more usable size for me because I'm not going to be doing monumental forging like that. I can't here, you know, it's a residential area, so I can't be beating away on that thing. So the idea is to sell that one to give us the money to kind of pay. This has already been paid for, but to basically just bring something back in. So I do know that this is referred to as a doming, a doming form maybe so you know let's think you might make a, for example a blacksmith might have spent his days making ladles like this one you know uh maybe like you say in tin copper steel you know this this might have an industrial application this one being made out of steel or maybe it's just back then people didn't really give much of a shit and they were just using metal cutlery that was rusty. But yeah, so essentially you'd use that for forming kind of half round elements for, I don't know, I don't know what, you know, well, ladles obviously, but I don't know what else, but I'm sure there'd be a complete market for it. Um, what might you use these for? Would these be useful for kind of, you know, bending metal, whatever it might be, forming it, sticking it in there, pounding on it, creating a creating a um a shank on things for example so yeah okay i think it's a bit rambly <laughs> yeah i just can't seem to get into my flow with it i think it's because i'm talking about stuff that i don't know i think i would have liked to have lived with these for a bit and then done my research rather than go straight into it but you know we haven't got time for you to become a learned man <laughs> yeah haven't, haven't right you haven't mate it might take in 10 years so just make uh, it up <laughs> yeah okay so we've got a bit of work to do cleaning this up but the previous owner has taken the trouble i mean this unfortunately is probably sat outside or it somehow it's got wet maybe in an old garden shed or something like this and um 
all of these tools have very recently been really nicely polished. So, you know, tinsmith, coppersmith, silversmith, which is what supposedly this guy was. Um, and, you know, it's a shame I've never met him. I, I hate to say it. I dare say that the reason that this stuff's kind of, you know, probably the stuff, the reason that this stuff's kind of come onto the market for want of a better expression is because the poor guy's died, you know. Um, but, you know, hopefully there might be some, some element of, you know, us still using it, which might bring him some, some kind of pleasure in the afterlife. If there is such a thing, <laughs> God, this is going well off topic in it. Now. Theology now. <laughs> yeah, I know. That would be an ecumenical matter. Um, we've got like a nice, you know, doming tool there. Um, you know, and then we've got these, for example. So these are just different radiuses. Again, I'd call them bottom tools, but I'd stand corrected by anyone who certainly knows more than I do. Um, so, we, you know, we're going to take one of these now and we're just going to do what I'd call a really quick and dirty kind of like how we'd bring that back for use. I actually think some of these fit into this. What is that? Well, this is it. Um, somebody will tell us and I can, I could go and find out, but like I say, I only got these yesterday. So I haven't, I haven't done the researches yet to find out. So I think, I think what you do is it's like that kind of thing. But maybe these just need a little bit of opening up. You'd probably pilot it out and you drive that into your stump. And then when you're working as a tinsmith, that allows you the reach to say work at the bottom of a tube or the bottom of a container, say. It looks like it's welded. It's all this beautiful crimson colour, but that doesn't look like it's been used at all. But then you would never lay into this with a hammer. It's these bits that fit into it that you'd kind of do. So have we got any, another one of them? No way that that fits in, but you'd never, that just wouldn't work. So we'll have to see, we'll have to see mate. It's nice, it's nice to have it. Um, you know, it might just end up that we, you know, move these on. I mean, look at those, there's a full set of them, isn't there? Are those the same? They've all got like little numbers on them. There is some really nice stuff here. I mean, well, this gives away its use, so what? What does that look like to you? So that is actually telling you that it was a silversmith because that is how you'd form a spoon, isn't it? Oh, okay. So basically, I've, I, there is a video online that I watched. What you're going to see being made is a dessert spoon. The material is sterling silver, which is 925% pure silver. It is hand forged all the way through. That blank eventually becomes a spoon. Um, I'll try and find that uh, film making a spoon and actually they make them really roughly and then they trim them all and hand file them to finish and then I think they actually make a blank they hand form a blank and then that goes into a press so that would that would form the essentially the ladle portion of a spoon and I mean it's perfectly shaped for that isn't it again this hasn't been polished so I presume this guy never made any spoons I, I, I suppose they're specialist tools I mean that's just like a half half dome Seemed to use that one a lot, didn't it? It's nicely polished. Had some red paint on there at some point. I mean, now I've got to the point where I'm just pointing out the fact it was painted once. That just goes to show you how little I know about this stuff. But so, what type of stuff are you going to make with this? Then? Well, what, I don't what... know, but this is a, this is an arena to explore, isn't it? You know, it, it's kind of like it gives you the ability to do. You know how we kind of tend to work in like what what would we say two dimensions? You know, height, thickness, or uh, you know, or in a flat plane in a, in a, you know, with our shields and our skulls and stuff, we work on a very flat basis. Well, this gives us that opportunity to kind of just explore that a little bit more, try and add another element to it, depth as well as height and width. I, I've got this idea to do some sort of um, head, probably animal rather than human or, or something of that nature, maybe even a skull in three dimensions. And of course, this, these, these tools would come in for that because you'd be able to, you'd be able to kind of, you know, form curves and, and form elements and then kind of, you say we're doing a skull, you'd be able to kind of, you know, form a dome and then attach a piece on and, and, and shape that. Very similar to what um, Joshua Delisle does with the ram's heads and now he's got a horse's head thing out there, hasn't he as well? So, you know, that, that would kind of, that, that kind of element would work. You see, I just don't understand how these, I think this is just meant to be gripped in a, a vice, actually, unless there's a tool that holds them. It's meant to be gripped in a vice. You know, you'd, you'd probably, 
you'd probably do exactly that with it. And then, you know, you'd work off this edge here. I mean, this is a crappy example, but you know, you might use it for, you know, forming something of that nature, I don't know. But I presume this, but maybe, you know, someone out there could correct us and let us know, you know, are, are we missing something here? Is, is there some component that that clips into? Um, you know, you could almost use that that way, couldn't you? I don't know. Bizarre. This is quite nice. This is really nice, actually. That must have been this guy's anvil. It's, uh, I'd call it a steak anvil, so it probably shouldn't be put into here and certainly shouldn't be put into there and then beaten to death with, but nice square edge there. So if you're a tinsmith, nice polished face. Doesn't need much of a touch up. Nice sharp edges on there as well. So that, I would imagine you'd set that into a tree stump but you see that that to me looks handmade so this is the kind of scale of things that you would make on that swage block way back in the day that might be 150 years old that probably more so the fact it doesn't have any markings on which kind of tells you that it's probably been hand forged you can see the imperfections and everything but it's still a lovely thing in it nice little striking face and it's unchipped well, there's not a chip out of that Nice bit of kit that, isn't it? There you go, this is another steak anvil. Again, shouldn't be put into a swage block because it's it's got a tapered shank on it. So the harder you beat on that, the more likely you are to break the uh, swage block. So again, I would suggest that there's either a method, a tool which you can mount these onto, or you'd chisel out a channel for it to fit into, and you just have this mounted as a tool. I mean, for me, we've already got one of these, so. I actually prefer that with that circular bick, nice fine bick. This is for, I presume, more open work. That is probably slightly less use to me than that one. So again, you know, that one we might, because it came as a job lot, we might, we might move that one on. Or if someone was interested in that one particularly, you know, drop us a, drop us a comment and we'll see what we can do. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of about it really. So you're gonna bring one back to life then? Uh, yeah, I mean, as best we can, how would we do that? I mean, should we take this one? What have you got? So we'll take this one because it's got a good finish on it. Already, we just need to get below all that. Just a bit more than surface rust, isn't it? Probably a little bit of pitting, but I don't think that's anything we can't get rid of. You know, well, I'm going to do this how, how we'd attack, uh, att attack this in, in my workshop because we're lucky and we've got a lathe. Why I'm covering the bed up is because I'm going to use abrasives and I don't want them to sit on that, uh, on the bed. So there we go. Are we in? Grab the keys of power to the trunk of doom. Oh yeah. Oh, grindy, grindy. Grindy, grindy. Having such a good time. Okay, so what we're going to do, we've just got a slightly worn out disc actually there. What grit is it? 40 grit. So we've just got a 40 grit flap disc on there. A little bit more aggressive than I want, but we're going to, we're polishing. So let's get that spinning. Let's get this out. It's not that badly pitted. Right along the edge here, maybe there's a pit, but... So there we go, we've got the rust off. So what's this? This is 80 grit. So we're just climbing up those grits. Whoops. Dropsy! Oh, Jesus. Let's go. So just diving up the grits, I think this is somewhere around the 240 mark. So some of those other weirder shapes of these things that are there, they'd be, have to be hand because we couldn't do this. It's just that this is easy, kind of, um, like I say, quick and dirty, quick and dirty refurb. 
God, that feels incredible, actually. It's so, it's rare that any of my, any of my blacksmith tools feel like that, except I've just polished my hammers, actually, so, but you know, polishing the top and bottom means that you get a far better finish, so it might make my kind of, it might improve, well, let's hope it will improve the uh, quality of my blacksmithing. Uh, 360 shit, so we need to, I've jumped to, I've jumped to grip, which is, I think, why we've got some of these scuff marks. So I'm just going to dive back down to 120. Yeah, that's, that's getting it. That's it. The longer you do it, the better the finish. Coming up really nicely, that. And what's this? Well, it's, it, this is fibro. So we used to use this in the machine shop a lot for kind of deburring, but I mean, it's, it's an old tool, so I'm not even sure if people use it still, but it's just like, what it'll do is it'll just take, that's 360 that, that we finished on there after we've worked through our grits. So it'll just add that little bit of a polish to it. So there you go. Let's get it out into the sun. So there you see, you know, what did we start with? Still see some marks from my, top end of the grip but I mean it's not it's not bad that at all is it considering what it was Hold on. that means that one should come up like that and of course these the faces on this stake anvil as well. Hit that with the sander. I would like to dress all these. But that's nice, nice little find that, because that's a stake anvil, so in its own right, there's probably 100 quid there, I would say. Well, let's hope there is, because I'm trying to make some of this money back. And do I need a stake anvil if I've got that? I don't know, I don't know, I don't think I do, if I'm being totally honest, but it's like anything, in it. Just because I don't need it doesn't mean I shouldn't have it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. But there Round you go. It off, Look, it was a quick and dirty one today. Thanks for bearing with us. It was only really to show you guys this little haul that we've kind of picked up yesterday and how we went about getting it or how those kind of channels kind of became, you know, we, you know, we've been working with Gary for, you know, staying in touch with Gary and, you know, he always turns up with stuff like this. It's brilliant. Um, and yeah, you know, so thanks to Gary for kind of thinking of us and um, yeah, stick with us because at some point we'll attempt to learn how to use these and hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys will be along for the ride. Good. Thanks. <laughs> industrial heritage, Mark, industrial heritage. 400 quid though. God, I told Jen last night. You have to sleep downstairs. <laughs> Practically. And going on about making, you know, earning some money to finish off the workshop and then bang 400 quid on this stuff. Ah, oh, mate, there'll always be more money. There'll always be more money. But will there be more of these? I can't tell you that because they're not making them anymore. But they are. But they're bloody expensive. <laughs> Problem is you don't see it, Mark. You don't see it. You don't see this stuff. But it'd be nice to get those all polished up and give it see what we can do with them. But, I'd, you know, again, we might find that they're completely useless for what we're doing. They're tinsmith's tools. And, uh, you know, I don't even know if tinsmithing is really a thing anymore. You know, is, it, is that an obsolete uh, format like uh, Bitamax? Uh, you know, yeah, probably is. But it's a more usable size, that one, anyway. I'm repeating myself now. So, yeah. So what are we going to do now? Say goodbye to, for that film one more time. Well, yeah, thanks for sticking with us. You know, a lot of you guys out there, probably not your thing, probably found that as dull as hell. Um, but, you know, there'll be other people that maybe are like, well, you know, where do you find all these things? Where do you get all your stuff from? Well, you keep your eyes open, uh, talk to people, let people know what you're up to, what you're doing. And, you know, some sometimes and very rarely stuff like this will find you. And unfortunately, this found me at a time when I could ill afford it. But what have I done? I've gone and spent the money anyway. You crazy fool. I know. Idiot, almost. You know. Oh, Ali does love his rusty pieces of shit, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, well, I do. Sorry. Say bye-bye, bye -bye, then. Bye. Bye. Pity me. Bye. <laughs> cool.
it called? Something Christian. Oh, yeah. What's Terry it? Christian. Terry Christian. All right. Shag you later. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, leave that alone.